Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should hit subscribe before you realise how fucking garbage this content is. If this is not your first time on the channel, you should probably do some sort of self-assessment and figure out what the fuck is going up on here that you thought coming back here was a great idea. Today's video, we're looking at Dino Dogmatica, or Dino Ligma, as I probably prefer. Two really great engines, two really great decks that actually work surprisingly well together. This is something I know people had sort of conceptualised quite early on when this deck came out, and I've sort of been playing with it here and there for a bit of fun, and it's actually still fucking insane. By insane, I mean it's pretty good. It's probably not YCS material, but you could definitely probably do okay at Locals with it, and what's not to love about that? Not that Locals exists anymore. Unfortunately, today it is not a physical profile. We can't get hold of physical cards because of all of the social interaction restrictions, we'll say. I won't say the buzzword because I don't want to get demonetized. But normally I'd head over to the channel sponsors over at Jam Jam Cards UK and they give me the hookup on all the cards I need. Speaking of which, if you are inspired to pick up any of the singles towards the end of this video, or even earlier, who am I to dictate that for you, then check out their link in the description for a nice discount on their eBay store using the link I have provided. But that's enough shilling for the sponsors, let's get stuck into the video. So before we continue, I do want to apologise if it sounds like there's a fucking jet engine coming off in the background. My laptop is really fucking loud. But anyway, let's get stuck into the profile. We're not here to listen to me talk about my laptop, that's for sure. We've got two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyrant. I think two is absolutely fine. Three is definitely way too bricky in this variant. Uh, and I would argue that you could probably cut it down to one, although I like the ability to have a second option there. Especially if the first one gets out, normally your opponent won't be able to deal with the second. Again, we already know how broken this is, arguably one of the best boss monsters in the game. Having access to it, you should definitely take advantage of. We've got one copy of Coatless, another way to get into that singular pill we're running, but the, the most important utility with all of this is the fact that it is in the gate, and we know in your modern game, you need as many of those as you possibly can on turn one in order to survive the subsequent turns thereafter. We've got one copy of Giant Rex just for free resource generation. Of course, getting him banished, he comes back. He is also level 4, so you can make rank 4s a little bit easier. He's just a really important component in this engine that you want to run. He's not the worst normal summon in the world, although if you're normal summoning him, things are usually going pretty badly for you, but that's besides the point. We have triple copies of Miscellaneousaurus. Have you read Miscellaneousaurus? This card is absolutely fucking bonkers. And again, one of those cards that people have called for to be hit on the list previously. I don't think I would like to see it happen, but it wouldn't surprise me if it did at all. But again, not just yet. Miscellaneousaurus is here to stay for now. Triple copies of Soli in Oviraptor. I mean, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. This is the best normal summon in the deck. No question about it. Again, I think if this card got hit to one in any capacity like they had it in the OCG, I don't know if it's still like that now. I honestly think it kills off the deck quite significantly, if you will. Again, triple copies of Soli in Oviraptor I think is absolutely crucial to this deck. If this normal summon goes off, you're in a really good place. Be aware, though, it is likely to get hand-trapped. We've got two copies of Baby Cerasaurus. I don't think the third is needed anymore. Uh, I think two is absolutely fine. You already know what this does. It helps, helps out those sort of broken combos, especially when it's popped by a Nimadorn Archosaur. Speaking of which, we're moving on to that next. Two copies now because you can just use it as a normal summon as well if you get really stuck. I personally usually play one copy, but I think two is a really good option if you have access to it. It's just always a free summon on board, effectively. And what's not to like about that? We have one copy of Jurak Aolo. This is more for Halka Fibrax free generation of uh, sort of options, if you will. We've also got Miscellaneous Saurus target here, though, so that we can easily sort of link up and go from there or get tutor out stuff from the deck. And, you know, who doesn't like free resources? And then we move on to the Dogmatica part of our engine. We've got Ecclesia at 3 here. Again, this is a really important component in the package. You could shorten this down if you really wanted to, but I really like having it in my hand. It's something that I want to see all the time, and so I think 3 copies is perfect. We have one copy of Fleur de Lis. I think with the fact that we already have droplets in here, the fact that we already have impermanence, the fact that we already have other hand traps of that ilk in here, it's not quite as necessary to have this negation there. It is really good to have a big body available to you, and I think that that's what this does really well, but it does also give you an option to interrupt or to negate opponent's effects, which is kind of good to have access to, but I think one is perfectly sufficient. And then we're running a single copy of 
Maximus. This is a card that I've usually omitted from my list, but actually I think it's really powerful at the moment. A lot of people are not running the cards to sort of circumvent being hit by this anymore. People are sort of accepted that if their extra gets torn to shreds, that that's okay. Well, why not take advantage of that and absolutely punish your opponent in almost every single conceivable scenario by ripping out their important combo pieces. And it is really important at the moment that people have access to all those combo pieces. A lot of the time, this alone can win games, especially if you can keep it on the field, keep it established. Cards like Conductor going to help you do that and just keep ripping cards out your opponent's deck every turn is it seems pretty good to me if nothing else it's another way to keep resolving your uh nadir servant which is something that you want to be able to do as frequently as possible and then onto our hand traps you have triple copies of ash blossom and joyous spring two copies of ghost bell you could fit gammon driver in here if you wanted to by making some changes into the deck and i think that wouldn't be a bad shout however ghost bell is incredibly strong at the moment and ash is the best hand trap basically every format so you need to play three of it again there wasn't room to fit in more hand traps than we've got here already so if you do feel like doing so you can definitely do so this is just my kind of guidance on what i play and what works quite well for me we have triple copies of Nadir Servant. This is one of the best cards in the deck. Being able to dump that stuff from the extra deck, being able to surge, it's absolutely fucking bonkers. Everybody knows this is the best card in the entire engine. You need to play it at three. No question about it. Just one copy of Double Evolution Pill. Again, it's kind of bricky if you have more than that. I think one is absolutely fine. If you're really insistent, you could play two. Definitely don't play three unless you're a fucking idiot. I think that one is absolutely fine. Though, again, it's only going to be really there to get you that first Conductor or that first Coatla Cell just to set up a negation or some sort of line of protection or be able to go more aggressive if you need to. But again, just one is absolutely fine. You really don't want to open this in your hand. Triple copies of Fossil Dig. For some reason, this card is still at three, which absolutely baffles me. Uh, but it's a three of Rota for the deck, so why not play it? A single copy of one for one. We have three level one targets in here. It is just three, isn't it? It is three. Three one for one targets in here, all of which are seemingly pretty good. And Imidorn, if nothing else, gets you further lines of play. The downside is that you have to lose a card out of your hand to get it. But it is at one for a reason. This card is insanely powerful. It can set up some really good plays. We all know level ones are kind of broken low key. So having one for one in the deck is a really good option. You'll also see there's a little bit more utility in the extra deck with this, but we'll get into that in a moment. We have a single copy of Terraform, and we're playing three field spells in here in total, not three different types, so we'll get to that in a moment. Again, if you could play this as a three-off, you absolutely would. We already know how strong and powerful Terraforming is. A single copy of Monster Reborn, because again, a lot of the time, people are going to throw hand traps galore at your cards, and this gives you a way to extend if they go to the grave, if they're destroyed, or if you need to just get a free material from your opponent once they have hand trapped you, this will help you do so. Two copies of Forbidden Droplet. Again, I think two is absolutely fine with the fact that we already have Impermanence, we already have Miscellaneousaurus, we already have Fleur de Lis. We have ways to pseudo-negate a lot of different things. This does have some other added benefits, of course, half in your opponent's uh, attack and all that kind of good stuff. Again, it's less important in this deck because we already have a lot of big beaters, so that kind of effect doesn't come up too often. But there are times you'll win games with that alone. We already know how strong this is. And again, we absolutely have to play it. And I think two is just absolutely fine. You could go up to third if you really wanted to. I just couldn't justify cutting anything else to put it in. Two copies of Lost World. I am always mindful of the fact that uh, we play mine. And uh, this kind of gives you a way to out it. Especially if your opponent is playing it as well. You've got a natural out to it. But also we know that this adds a lot of protection to the deck. To your field, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and being able to do that just seems like a really good option. I've only ever found this to be good. So why not play it if we have access to it? And again, as alluded to there, we are playing Mystic Mind. We like free wins. Turn one. Game one, I should say. Game one, if your opponent doesn't have an out to this and normally they won't, this is your ticket to the free win. You may not like it, but it's the truth. The cold, hard truth. And then we round off with our traps here. We have triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Again, incredibly strong. And, you know, you could make arguments for other hand traps in there, especially if you don't have access to these. But I think the Infinite Impermanence is a really, really good option still. Being able to switch off back row as well as negate monster effects is just really fucking nice. And then we have one copy of Punishment in here. Again, if I could play more than one copy of this, I absolutely would. This card is insanely strong. Really, really good. Uh, again, if I could play multiples, I would. But we're just playing one because that's all we really have space for. It's a really good option, especially for your turn one setup. And a lot of the time, if your combo pays off the way it should do, this is what you're going to end with. And that rounds us off for the main deck, a solid 44 cards. Again, you could go with some other options there. These are just how I'm playing things, and it works quite nicely for me. We're not doing side decks here because, again, I think that it's really 
sort of built on what meta you're playing in. And at the moment, that's kind of unpredictable as to what you're doing. If you're playing remote duels, you've only got access to what you've got access to, but you're probably going to want some high-end stuff. If you're playing in online unofficial simulators, of course, you're going to be able to have access to absolutely anything. So build according to that. If you're lucky enough to be able to play at locals, of course, you'll be building for whatever you're playing against. We do, however, move on to our extra deck, Bastard of the Ashen Dragon, aka Titanic Lad. Really good option, especially turn one if you've got nothing else to dump. This just allows you to get searches or special summons depending on what you need early on in the game. Again, a really good option as a one-off. I don't think you need to play more. You could do if you wanted to run a bigger Dogmatica package, but I honestly think one is perfectly sufficient. Two copies of Entis, especially for later on in the game. If you want to do some board breaking, this is a really important card for doing so. Also, if you're playing in a sort of mirror match, this gives you an option to out your opponent's cards. Again, a really good option for the, uh, the extra deck as a target for all of the Dogmatica cards. We have one copy of Omega because, frankly, we can make it. But if nothing else, you can also dump it into the grave and use its utility from there. We have the Evolsar twins here, Dolka and Lagia. You already know what these do. They are free negations, effectively solemn judgments on legs or whatever. Uh, both really good cards depending on what you're playing against. You can go into one or the other. Really important cards for this deck in my opinion. Digusto Emerald is something that I wanted to try out, being able to recycle cards pseudo avarice style. I think that's a really good option for something like this to try out. It seems to work really well in testing so far. It's nothing insane, but it does work quite nicely and I like it. I'm trying it out for that reason. But again, this is a flex spot. You could try something else instead. Kakinagashi Fucho. I fucking hate this card's name. I remember when this first came out, I thought this was absolutely trash and couldn't see a conceivable way in which this was playable. But this is where one for one comes in. Because we can quite easily make this, we can use it to crash, take no battle damage, and then we can make our big boy Zeus here. It's also a way to keep it on the field if you need to keep it on for longer so that you can go into Zeus the next turn. If you can make it outside of, or sorry, if you've already gone into main phase two, again, it gives you an option to continue to do that. AA Zeus here, of course, absolutely insane. We already know exactly what this does. Um, Sky Thunder's an absolutely broken card, and everyone that can play it is playing it. We have access to it in this deck, so why not do so? And then on to our link options. This is where it starts to get really tight because there are so many different options we could try out in here. We've got one copy of Link Rebo. We're playing level ones. One copy of IP Masquerina. You don't make it and then pass turn like me. It never works out for the best. Chris Rudd, Halka, Fibrax. Not really because we're playing... Synchros, although we have op options for sort of one, uh, I would play this just for link climbing and generating free resources. We've got a utility package in Unicorn and Phoenix. Again, being able to spin stuff in your opponent's turn, being able to pop cards in your opponent's turn, being able to get free draws is always nice. And then finally, we have Access Code Talker. It is Power Crab Boral Sword almost instantaneously. If you don't have access to this, though, Boral Sword is a good option. We do have a lot of punching power in the deck, though. The real advantage of using this is being able to use it to pop Cards. Getting big boys on field is not a problem in here. Being able to break the board is something that we want to be able to do neatly. And having the dino options in here really helps encompass all of that. And that, my friends, is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have subscribed if you haven't already. Although if you absolutely fucking hated it and you just couldn't look away, that sounds like a good enough reason to subscribe for me. Anyway, thank you very much for coming along, guys. I do really appreciate you being here. Again, you should really hit subscribe if you haven't already, and you should definitely check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. But again, that's enough advertising, shoving down your throat. Thank you very much for coming along, guys. I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.